ain't none but love for you. None but love for you. Yeah, have any clue what's about to happen to him? Oh, not a chance in hell. Good night. Peace! It's biblical what's happening. Don't you believe that? Like it's very much like the Old Testament kings that were struck down for being evil rulers. There, there's, an, there's an entire book about it called the Bible. You can see what happens to evil rulers when the lies and the evil deeds finally catch up to them. They are brought low. They're turned into animals sometimes. They're always humiliated and they always go out and collapse, right? And this is, in fact, Joe Biden's collapse. This is what they sounded like four years ago. Jake Tapper, lip quivering, defending Joe Biden. Here's what Jake Tapper sounds like last night. Let's let's see if you can uh, sense maybe a, a vibe shift here. In an attempt to reassure voters about his fitness for office, Biden campaign chair Jen O'Malley Dillon holding a car with call with party leaders earlier today, telling them this too shall pass. There is a pattern, discernible pattern of Democratic officials seemingly trying to convince you, the public, to not believe what you saw and what you heard with your eyes and with your ears on Thursday night. What I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with. Uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. The, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Democratic officials have tried to spin this in many ways. They said President Biden just had a cold. They said it was just one off night akin to when President Obama in 2012 was rusty and seemed a little huffy. But behind the scenes, make no mistake, most Democratic officials witnessed the same shocking spectacle that you did. The difficulty that the presumptive Democratic nominee, the current president of the United States, had just articulating his basic thoughts during the 90 minutes of the debate. Who's that guy? What, ha what happened to Jake Tapper? Who has he been replaced with? Is there a body double? Did they get the, did they get, did they get Jake too? Whatever happened to the stutter, Jake? Now, I will say this, and I, I hate to say it, and I'll only say it this one time, but I'm like really glad that the CNN anchors didn't interrupt. We went hard at Jake Tapper on the, the program the entire week. But quite frankly, as I watched, and let me know in the comment section if you agree with this, as I watched, while some of the questions were certainly biased, uh, obviously, you know, the, these questions about these far left wing fringe uh, ideas and ideologies that the, the regular voters don't care about. If you were only to ask questions that voters care about, it would just be inflation, and immigration. That'd be it. Right. And maybe forever war. Those would be the only things that voters care about. But nonetheless, I didn't see any interrupting. You know, I was expecting a bunch of like, excuse me, excuse me, like a bunch of like Karen actions. Right. Super, super high soy, super high cortisol. You know, like zero testosterone, a lot of like a lot of Karen pounding on the table. I didn't actually see that. It was actually kind of nice. They let like the two guys talk and that was devastating enough. Now, Jake Tapper's letting <laughs> Democrat members of Congress, a guy from Joe Biden's state, a little snively rat named Chris Coons. OK, so this guy uh, is just such a garbage pail. Uh, this little man and he's teeny. He's like four feet tall. This guy. He's the guy who let Joe Biden sniff his daughter. I, I, I mean that. OK, I'm not trying to be a uh, dick here. We have the photos of Chris Coon standing there smiling as Joe Biden like creeps on his poor child. Joe, on any other level, Joe Biden would be put in prison for stuff like this. We, we can grab we can grab that clip. We'll show you. But first, I'll show you something that is as humiliating, which is this dude last night on Jake Tapper's show. Uh, being like, no, Joe Biden's fine. And Jake Tapper actually bodying the guy over it. Let's go. I want to start by playing some moments uh, from the debate. 
get rid of the ability of Medicare to uh, for the ability to for the with the uh, with, with, with the COVID. Excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with uh, look. If the the, the 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 total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers, President Trump, uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. How do you explain the performance at the debate in moments like that? Well, Jake, um, you just took what was probably the most difficult moment to watch of the entire ninety-minute debate, but you didn't share what I found the hardest moments to watch, which was when Donald Trump was unleashing a torrent of lies, of invective, of vengeance. And we have to look at these two moments in contrast. The Philadelphia Inquirer, the most important newspaper uh, in the swing state where I spent the weekend campaigning, watched that debate and concluded that the political party whose leadership should be going to their candidate and saying, in the interest of our nation and in the interest of our party, you should be stepping aside, sir, is the Republican Party, because Donald Trump gave no reasons for folks to vote for him and a lot of reasons for folks to vote against him. Oh, really, Chris, you want people to step aside. Well, why did you step aside when Joe Biden was doing this to your daughter? Why, why, why were you stepping aside and allowing this to happen? You sick little snivelly monster, you little rat. What, a, what, what, what kind of a father allows this? Yeah, I got daughters. I got daughters. Some man, some dementia-laden, dandruffy old man did this to my daughter. I'd be in jail. I promise you that. I'd be in jail that night. And I'd be having to make a lot of calls from payphones to my lawyer. Uh, no father would ever allow his daughter uh, to be stepped on like that. There's more, uh, you know, d d d here's another angle of this happening. Look at the look at how look at how Coons is grinning gleefully about this happening to his child. This when I say these people are demonic, there's no other word for it, right? Like we know we know what's said about protecting children uh, from predators. Like this is important. You must protect your children from predators. Predators in the schools. Predators roaming the streets predators in the workplace and predators in elected office. What, a, what a evil little goblin, this man, what a sick goblin. Okay. We have a play beside him. Look at this. This is Mr. This is Chris Coons sitting here defending Joe Biden. Look at this behavior. You ever see, I mean, are you a parent? Do you want to be a parent? I'm sure if you, even if you wish to be a parent, if you're a young person, you could like imagine the love that you have for your child. And then could you imagine letting this happen to your child? I mean, this is not what we're going to do the whole, whole show on, but uh, despicable, despicable. You won't get worse than that, but you can try. And so Chris Coons, uh, after allowing Joe Biden uh, to sniff his kid, there's no other explanation, sniff and kiss his child as his child is wincing and trying to like get protection trying to get, trying to have somebody step in and say, how, like, call the cops, like quick, call the cops. This old man is molesting a child. Like it, it, her, your daughter's like screaming out for that. And then nothing happens. Instead you like smile, I like, you like, smile. When I see Demont, I mean, that's what I mean. There's no other explanation for it. Parents in the chat, parents in the chat. Are, is there any explanation for that? Is there any excuse for that to happen to your kid? No, there is not. And let me tell you, like political power is a really, really poor excuse uh, when you are being judged uh, for allowing something like that to happen to your child on camera. Goodness, what does Joe Biden do off camera? Really, it's amazing. <laughs> Read Ashley Biden's diary if you want a little window into what uh, Joe Biden does off camera and um, yeah, where Jill Biden gets her shower curtain dresses. Chris Coons continues to debase himself uh, on this Jake Tapper interview. And again, I cannot believe I'm saying this, but uh, way to go, CNN, pushing back on these obvious lies and the obvious con continued embarrassment and humiliation by this guy. Uh, how, how, how much more can you disgrace and debase yourself for Joe Biden? Here we go. 
But the core question is whether what you saw in those few moments of the debate and over much of the arc of that 90 minute debate uh, was someone having a difficult night or someone who is no longer up to the job. As with, he with said all... on the stage in North Carolina, he wouldn't be running if he weren't confident he's okay. up for the job. So with all due respect, um, it is not. It is not honest to say that this is just one night. There have been moments like this that people have seen in front of the cameras and other, and, and other moments but with, that, with cameras not there. Uh, just two weeks ago, let me just show this clip. Uh, there was another moment like this, not just a senior losing a train of thought, but something else going on. Uh, here he is. Uh, it was in an event about immigration. He, he tries to interview, in, introduce uh, DHS Secretary Mayorkas, and there's some sort of glitch. I don't know what it is. So let's roll that tape. Thanks to all the members of Congress and Homeland Security Secretary. I'm not sure I'm going to introduce you all the way. <laughs> and all kidding aside, Secretary Mayorkas. I don't know what that was. Uh, that doesn't trouble me at all, Jake. Frankly, you can put up a dozen clips of me, of you, of anybody who's on TV who speaks publicly all the time, losing their train of thought, misstating who they're about to introduce, not having a fluid moment. And if we're honest with each other, Jake, Every time Donald Trump speaks in front of a rally, there's long stretches where he is saying nonsense. Show me. You know, we broadcast a lot of Trump rallies. We go to a lot of Trump rallies. Have you been to a Trump rally? D does Trump ever say nonsense? Trump makes a lot of jokes. There's a lot of really funny things. We're, we're about to do a meme review of orange Joe Biden that they tried it out. The new thing is the orange Joe Biden. But no, I've never heard Donald Trump sputter nonsense and be incapable of speech or incapable of even walking across a flat stage. No, you filthy liar. I'm seeing the chat melt down, by the way. Lots of parents here who protect their children. God bless you. Lots of parents in the audience who protect their children. Uh, let's pin a poll to the top of the chat. Uh, make sure you vote in this poll. Uh, should Joe Biden uh, get a knock from the police over what exists in Ashley Biden's diary and over videos like this? Should, should Joe Biden be criminally investigated for videos that exist of him with these uh, in these six circumstances? Let's let's get a poll running. We'll we'll talk through the poll at the end of the show. We'll see what people think. Uh, obviously, if anyone behaved on camera like this towards any other children, if 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 anybody uh, in the public eye did this to, stra to to strangers' children, they'd immediately be arrested. They'd be on a list for the rest of their life. They had an ankle monitor. And yet Joe Biden is being defended by this man after what he did to his daughter. <laughs> it just show it this really does show you exactly what these people what these people will do, how debased they will be for power. There are some people who are a little more hard boiled, I guess you could say, uh, uh, from the Clinton years that have gone on TV now uh, to say the opposite. Some people that don't hold office that are just like cantankerous, old, creepy men. And it's like, like I just say creepy because James Carville is the weirdest looking dude. I mean, he look, looks like an alien or like a, I, I, I don't really I don't really know. Somebody who's like, you know, been through a, a nuclear bomb and all of his hair fell out. I'm not sure. It has no eyebrows. James Carville's a weird looking dude. All I'm saying here is that uh, James Carville represents the vast majority of Democrats who are like, no, this is completely unwinnable for Joe Biden now. Like he's not like I want to show you both sides here. James Carville, one, he's a uh, what's the right way to say this? He's, he's the most famous or one of the most famous Democrat political consultants on earth going on CNN in a blaze of glory saying uh, we're done. We've already lost the election. Watch. We have a country that 72 percent want something different. If the Democratic Party can't produce something different that 72% of people want, then why do we exist? What are we here for? I, I mean, the country is clamoring for change. And, and what are we going to offer them? The same stuff? It doesn't make any sense, Jake. That, give the people what they want. Box populi. That they want something different. Let's give it to them. 
I mean, I, I just don't get the whole thing. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm from Bucks, and, you know, I was, everybody saw what they saw Thursday night. I, I don't take any pleasure in this. I, I, this was a year ago. I'm going to be 80 in October. You can't fight this stuff. It's just there. So he says, uh, give, so that's, that's one of the, you know, our, whatever you think of him, you probably don't think very highly of James Carville. I certainly don't, but, um, he is a, a legendary Democrat consultant and he's sitting there telling, saying to you and me live on air on CNN, why do we even exist as a Democrat party? The, like maybe the Democrat party should just li liquidate. Like, why are we even here? What an existential and incredible crisis. He says, we must give the people something different. We have to give them something that the people demand something different. And we're not really a political party. We should just, we really should just close up shop. And I, <laughs> I agree with you, buddy. We should just close up shop.